high second graders. Today we're going to read chapter two in Poppy. Poppy remembers. A stinging sensation on her nose woke Poppy. She touched a pot to the sore spot and winced. Then she looked about in the dark and shook her head with confusion. Where was she? Under a piece of rotten bark. Where was the bark? On Bannock Hill. What was she doing there? She had come with her boyfriend, Ragweed. Where was Ragweed? No sooner did Poppy ask herself that than the full horror of what had occurred rushed upon her. Ragweed dead! Eaten, probably. Poppy closed her eyes. The sheer ghastliness of the thought made it hard for her to breathe. Then, recalling how close she had come to the same fate, she checked herself for other injuries. Though her plump, round belly was white, the rest of her fur was orange-brown. She had large ears and dark, almost round eyes, full whiskers, tiny nose, pink nose, and a tail. Even for a deer mouse, Poppy was rather dainty. Upon examination, everything except the nose seemed to be intact. She stole a look up from under the bark and considered her situation. She was on Bannock Hill alone and without permission. Oh, how she wished she were home. From her earliest days, just a few full moons ago, her parents had been teaching their litter about Mr. Ocox. She recalled how they lined up all 12 of them to take instruction. Mr. Ocox has been about for ages, her father long lectured in a sternest voice. He was a rather stout fellow with elegantly curled whiskers and slightly protruding front teeth. His crowning glory was an ivory thimble that he had found in which ever since he'd worn as a cap. Mr. Ocox has been here longer than any mouse's living memory, Lungwort continued. The territory around Dimward belongs to him. Mr. Ocox is king. And he protects us, said Sweet Cicely, Lungwort's wife and Poppy's mother. That's the most important thing. Sweet Cicely was a small creature, even for a deer mouse. With soft pale eyes and a nervous habit of flicking her ears with her paws as if they were dusty. Protects us from what? Poppy remembered Ragweed asking. As an outside outside as outside an outsider, he had taken to hanging around the family. He was always asking for answers. Why do deer mice live here and not there? Why do you folks eat this and not that? Why is your fur dark on top and white on the bottom when mine is golden? Why wouldn't it be the other way around? Though these consequences, constant questions could be irritating, Poppy had to admit that she'd often wondered about the same answers. Curiosity, however, was not something her parents encouraged. Poppy admired Ragweed's persistence. Mr. Ocox protects us from creatures that eat us, Lungwort answered gravely. Raccoons, foxes, skunks, weasels, stoats. One by one, he displayed pictures of these animals. Most important... He protects us from porcupines like this one. He held up a lurid portrait of a huge black-nosed beast covered with gruesome spikes. Blood seemed to drip from his snarling mouth. The young mice gasped in dread. Porcupines are our particular enemies, Lungwort insisted. There is nothing porcupines won't do to catch mice. And what would they do with what would they do with us then? Acorn, one of Poppy's sisters, asked in a trembling voice. First, they shoot their barbed quills into you, Lungwort said. Then, they trample you, Sweet Cicely added. Finally, Lungwort concluded, they break you up into tiny little bits and cobble you up. Now it was terror that the young mice felt. I'll accept Ragweed. Lungwort, he demanded, other than that picture, you ever seen a porcupine? A real one? Not precisely, Lungwort snapped, but let me tell you something, Ragweed. I'll be more than thrilled to get through my whole life without ever seeing one. After all, Mr. Ocox has seen porcupines, often. In private conversations with me, mind, these are actually personal experiences I can verify. He informed me that porcupines are not only extremely dangerous, but also devilishly sly. Take note of this judgment comes from a powerful meat-eating bird. The point is Mr. Ocox protects us from porcupines. It was he, in fact, who was kind enough to educate us about them as well as supply these pictures. Then how come you have to worry about this dude Ocox too? Ragweed pressed, struggling to control his temper. Lungwort tapped his thimble cap down over his forehead. Fuming, he replied, Mr. Ocox protects us from vicious porcupines. Only when we accept him as a ruler, that's why. All he requires is that we ask his permission whenever we move beyond the immediate area of Grey House. We have freedom to go about the old orchard up to Glitter Creek. We can do the same for Farmer Lamont's fields. At our own risk, of course, life is full of danger. Go beyond, however, and we need to get Mr. Ocox's permission. 
What's his reason? Ragweed persevered. Sweet Cicely, brushing her ears, sighed with exasperation. How Poppy, her own daughter, could take up with such an ill-mannered ruffian was beyond her understanding. All the same time, she said, Mr. Rag Ragweed, as Mr. Ocox has patiently explained to my husband, he needs to know if we're moving about so he won't mistake us for porcupines. Asking permission is a small sacrifice to pay for our safety. Lungwort nodded his agreement. That owl, he pointed out, has incredible vision and hearing. He can hear or see anything, even in the dark. And a good thing, too. Porcupines prowl at night. More move like lightning, Mr. Ocox says. Shoot quills without asking questions? Kill without mercy? No, my boy, we don't argue with Mr. Ocox. He's our protector. If we disobey him, break his rules, and I can't say I blame him either, he gets upset. What'll he do then? asked Leaf, one of Poppy's brothers. He'll eat you, Lungwort replied briskly as he put away the picture of the porcupine. And, he continued, it happens. During the past year, we have lost some 15 family members. It may be presumed that all failed to ask Mr. Ocox for permission to go somewhere. The children were shocked into silence. Ragweed Hover spoke out again. Hey, Pops, didn't I hear you say porcupines are huge? You saw the picture, Lungwort responded. And don't call me Pops. It's common. So them porcupines are bigger than us, right? A lot bigger, sweet Cicely said, emphasizing the lot. Well, old lady, Ragweed kept on. If them there porcupines are so huge and we're so small, and if this dude owl has such amazing sight, how come he might confuse us mice with them there dude porcupines? You know what I'm saying? An indignant sweet Cicely looked to her husband. Longwort sputtered. Ragweed, for your information, proper grammatical usage is those porcupines, not them porcupines. And while I'm thinking about it, if you intend to court my daughter, I thank you to groom your hair properly when you get up in the morning. As for that earring you've taken to wearing, I don't like it, not one bit. This family is committed to keeping up mice values and is opposed to stupid questions. With that, Longwort stalked away, tail whipping about in agitation. On Bannock Hill, Poppy remembered it all. She also remembered it was Ragweed who insisted they come up to the hill, but he absolutely refused to ask Mr. Ocox's permission to do so. Perhaps, then, what occurred, horrible as it had been, had served Ragweed right. Then there Poppy vowed she would never leave home again. The difficulty was that at that moment, she was far from home, frightened and alone. End of